Good morning, and welcome to St. John the Baptist Cathedral Basilica Parish. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. Would you take a moment to silence your phones, please? Thank you. Our presider today is Father Cecil Critch, and our opening hymn can be found in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 14i, Canticle of Mary, 14i. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, it's a great feast day of the Assumption of Mary, and uh, in the old days it was called Lady Day, a very special day in our church, and uh, we celebrate today the Mary, Mary's entry into heaven. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries today, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts and to forgive us for the times we have failed to say yes to the Lord's will in our lives. We ask the Lord's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. the Father to intercede. 
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul, into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. <clears throat> God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant was seen within his temple. A great portent appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pangs, an agony of giving birth. Then another portent appeared in heaven, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on its head. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman and was about to bear a child so that it might devour her child as soon as it was born. And he gave birth to a son, a male child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. But her child was snatched away and taken to God to his throne and the woman fled into the wilderness, where she was placed prepared by God, so there can be nourished for 1,260 days. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven proclaiming, Now come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of God and the authority of his Messiah. The word of the Lord. The response to Psalm 45. At your right hand stands the queen in gold of Ophir. At 
At your right hand stands the queen in gold of Ophir. At your right hand stands the queen in gold of Ophir. Daughters of kings are among your ladies of honor. At your right hand stands the queen in gold of Ophir. Hear, O oh daughter, consider and decline your ear. Forget your people and your father's house. At your right hand stands the queen in gold of Ophir. The king will desire your beauty since he is your lord. Bow to him. The princess is decked with golden robes. In many colored robes she is led to the king. Behind her the virgins, her companions follow. At your right hand stands the queen in gold of Ophir. With joy and gladness they are led along as they enter the palace of the king. At your right hand stands the queen of gold of The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. 
He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. And Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Today's Feast of the Assumption celebrates Mary's full sharing in the risen life of Christ. The Gospels present Mary with qualities that can deepen our devotion to her. They can help us to love her, meditate on her, imitate her, pray to her, and trust in her. Mary is the great believer, the first disciple or follower of Jesus. She is the faithful mother who stays near her son as he is rejected, condemned, and executed on the cross. Then as a witness of the risen Christ, she prays with the disciples at Pentecost in the early church to receive the Holy Spirit who always accompanies them in the future. We look at today's Feast of the Assumption as an opportunity to celebrate Mary's inspiring faithfulness. We remember the great event of the Annunciation years before she was taken body and soul into heaven when Mary said yes to the angel's invitation to become the mother of God. We celebrate that simple, humble yes which God used to set events in motion that changed our relationship with God, our relationship with one another, and literally changed the whole of human history. But as we recall and celebrate Mary's yes to God, let us not forget that today's Feast of the Assumption is really a God, about God's yes to Mary. It's about the way God rewarded Mary for her total surrender to God's, God's plan. It's about the way God honored her for saying yes every day of our life, even when it meant letting a sword of sorrow and grief pierce our soul. It's about God lifting Mary up to heaven at the end of our life, all in response to her humble, loving faithfulness to God. Today's feast tells us something also about our lives. It tells us that God rejoices every time we say yes to God. It tells us that God honors every single time we decide to follow God. It tells us that no act of faith, no act of trust, and no act of love or obedience escapes God's notice. He tells us that where Mary has gone, we too can hope to follow. Just as a mustard seed of faith can move mountains, even the smallest of yeses to God in our lives can change the way other people see God. In the gospel we see today, Mary, in accepting God's will in her life, is given a mission. She is sent to the hill country to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who is also expecting. Mary brings the joy of the good news with her. Mary is the first disciple, in many ways prefigures all the disciples to follow, traveling to spread the gospel and proclaim the good news. Mary is certainly a woman on a mission. We could even call her the first missionary disciple, the one who literally carried Christ to the world. Each one of us, like Mary, is offered gifts and talents and opportunities and grace. We, like Mary, did must open up, God's, open up God's gifts and use them in our, work, in our service to others, generously and unconditionally, so that the Mighty One can do great things in and through us. God uses each of us every day as we strive to bring his message to a world that often rejects it today. All God wants is our yes, because God can work through anyone. Though Mary has left this world, she is not removed from it. As our mother and our intercessor, she still remains close to us, we pray for each of us as we set out in haste to all the places we need to be on our missionary journey carrying Jesus to the world. Just as Mary carried Jesus in her womb and nurtured, loved, and supported him, she lo nurtures, loves, and supports us, each one of us, on our journey of faith. And along the way of the cross and at our own Calvary, our mother Mary's love will surround us and our prayers will support us in our difficult times. We need never hesitate, beloved brothers and sisters, to turn to Mary in all of our needs and difficulties. Our Lady does one thing, she brings us closer to Jesus. Pope Francis in his homily today says that Mary our mother leads us joyfully toward her son, reminding us that our lives are a continuous journey towards final union with the Lord. And so when the voice of the Good Shepherd calls us by name to the Father's house, when our earthly work is accomplished, a mother's tender embrace awaits us. And please stand now as we proclaim our faith and we pray the Apostles' Creed and we bow when we say, Born of the Virgin Mary, that section. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We turn now in deep trust in our Heavenly Father to hear and answer all the prayers we have in our hearts today. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and Peter, our Archbishop, and all those who lead and shepherd our church, we pray to the Lord. We pray today especially for Father Mike Braille, who will become ordained today the new Bishop of Pembroke, Ontario. Uh, Father Braille used to be at St. Teresa's uh, in the early days, so we pray for him today. We pray to the Lord. We pray for peace in our world, especially the peaceful negotiations in our Middle East, Ukraine, certainly Sudan and Haiti, all those areas of conflict in our world. We pray for peace. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray also today for all those who are sick, those who have asked us to pray to the Holy Spirit for the healing power of the Holy Spirit for Sister Roisin Gannon, Sister Connie Power, Christopher Anthony, Yvonne Steiner, and Lily. We pray to the Lord. We pray today for your intentions today. We pray to the Lord. And God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the graces and blessings you give us every day. And we make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. hymn for the preparation of the gifts can be found in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 463A, 463A, Immaculate Mary. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now in with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Most blessed My sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice of reconciliation and praise, which we celebrate on the assumption of the Holy Mother of God, that it may lead us to your pardon and confirm us in perpetual thanksgiving through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your 
our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your church's coming to perfection and as a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would allow, not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. So in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of in the highest. Blessed is he who indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world to bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy especially Cecil and Mary Critch and deceased family members, Beatrice Kiley and deceased family members, Joseph Critch and deceased family members. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John the Baptist and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Pray 
with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, the people of God. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We share the peace of Christ now with one another. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Number 610 in the Catholic Book of Worship. Taste and see, 610. Oh, mm -hmm. 
Let us pray. In our prayers also today, let us remember Sister Margaret McLaughlin, a presentation, who is very ill at this time. We pray for her. And let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed to heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Good day. Our mission in Him in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 457. Hail, Holy Queen, enthroned above. 457. <laughs>